hi everyone and welcome back to the channel now such is the way with covid travel plans i found myself kind of stuck in europe for a couple of weeks so where better to come to ride a bike than greece now i'm on the island of lefkada which is on the western side of greece in the ionian sea and got in touch with a company called get active lefkas who've kindly lent me a lovely ridley Phoenix SL Altegra. I'm going to tell you why in this video Greece is probably the best hidden gem in Europe for cycling. Why do I say that? Well, there's mountains everywhere. There seems to be barely any flat roads. The roads are pretty good on the whole. On the mainland side, you've got climbs, 20k long climbs everywhere. You've got some very high kind of alpine style mountains in the north of Greece. And mainly there's just hardly any traffic, hardly any other cyclists. Food's really good, coffee everywhere and bakeries everywhere. So you're really well supported for a cyclist. And in total, the island's just not very big. You can do a, a good loop of the island in about 80K, about 1500 meters of climbing. Or if you go further inland, there's some very big mountains to tackle. Some of the roads are a bit chunky in places. So if you're gonna bring your own bike, make sure you've got 25 or 28 but that's all you really need. There's mountains absolutely everywhere in this place. Cycling doesn't really seem to be that popular in Greece. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's something to do with the national service that youngsters have to go through, the kind of, you know, after school or after university or college or whatever. But it just seems like cycling's not that popular, but it's hard to understand why, because they have some of the best roads I've ever ridden in Europe. There's mountains everywhere. Okay, if you're training for triathlons and you want to bring your TT bike, maybe not the best place for you because there's just climbs everywhere. But uh, people are so friendly. The food is great. Accommodation is of very high quality pretty much wherever I've been in Greece. And uh, bakeries and coffee shops are just everywhere. So you don't have to stuff your pockets full of food. Sometimes you go to these far-flung places to ride your bike. You're not quite sure what you're going to get to eat on the way or where there's going to be a coffee shop or a, a water stop. But in Greece, no, no, don't have to worry. Coffee shops, people live on coffee here. Freddo cappuccino, Freddo espresso, every five or six K if you want it. So this is the island of Lefkada in the, in the Ionian Sea. It's on the west, western side of Greece. I've also just done a bit of riding on the mainland, which I would say is a bit more mountainous, a bit more remote. But uh, here's very convenient. It's a great place to holiday. Tourism is quite well set up in Lefkada. You've got a lot of water spots, a lot of sailing, probably the most uh, sailing charter companies per square kilometre in Europe here. Uh, little ports, marinas and keys absolutely everywhere. Great for windsurfing, great for wind sports. There's a very reliable um, westerly that blows up in the afternoon, pretty much all spring and summer, and it's not too strong. So bike rides done in the morning, go sailing in the afternoon. That's how you should do it here in Greece. So this is the climb just above Vasiliki. It's on the very southern tip of the island. It goes all the way up. Uh, it's about 10% average to a lighthouse at a point right at the end of the southern tip of the island. Uh, it's early morning now, so breeze still hasn't got up. And I've been on this road and I've not seen a single car or motorbike come up. So I'm very lucky to have been uh, given a bike by a company called Get Active Lefkas. They do road cycling, mountain biking, hiking. They do guided tours for hiking, road cycling and mountain biking. But since I've been here, the weather's been perfect, not too hot, very dry, not humid as well. Sometimes you ride in Spain in the summer or in the spring, it can get very humid. It makes riding quite uncomfortable. But here, humidity is only about 40%, so it's very dry. Sweat leaves you pretty easy. I think I'm near the top of this one now, climbing up from Vasiliki. I think I've been climbing for about 20 minutes already. Hopefully near the top, because I'm really unfit. Now, if you're not familiar with Lefkada or the Ionian Islands, well, like many places in the Mediterranean, basically, the western sides tend to be kind of big cliffs and uh, more exposed beaches, but very beautiful, as that's where the prevailing winds come from. And the eastern side of Lefkada is more populous, a few bigger towns, still not big towns, but the west coast is a bit more uh, exposed. Uh, a little bit less populated and uh, just little villages, hilltop villages like this. I think we're on the descent now. So I thought that was it for the climbing. 
I was wrong. It was just a little, tiny little descent. Now we're climbing again. Back up the other way. Or continuing from sea level down there. I guess I'd say this is about 800 meters above sea level. At a guess. And uh, after this, I think pretty much it's mostly downhill to Lefkast town. And then back down the eastern side. <sighs> Need a giros. And this is the uh, kind of northwest side of the island. As I said, the west coast is arguably a bit more spectacular and beautiful than the east coast, just because of the higher hilltop villages and the cliffs. And the roads are just stunning, no traffic. Bike's doing well. Ridley. Fits me good. This is a large size. Seat tube length's about 570 mil, I think. A reasonable stack on it. Good tyre clearance as well, being a bike designed for Belgium. Easily fit the 28s in there. So this is the road north from Parga through a village called Anthusa and then it goes all the way to Igumanitsa which is the port, little port town on the mainland where you can get the ferry to Corfu and Paxos and other places. So out of Parga, started straight away with like a 30 minute climb, uh, didn't expect that. So uh, not a great recovery uh, tool, just no flat roads here. What's that song? Now, this bike I'm riding that they've lent me is equipped with a compact chainring and I think a 30 is my biggest cog on the back. And I would say if you're bringing your own bike to Greece, bring your smallest chain rings and your biggest cassette because some of the uh, the climbs are pretty ungodly. I found that on the minor roads they don't switch back them as much as they would in other places in Europe. They just go straight up, just get it done. Least amount of tarmac. So you do get these kind of horrible 10, 15% ramps that go on for a couple of hundred meters. And you're really grateful for the bigger cassette and the smaller chain rings. So welcome back. I've climbed up through the village of Perdica, gone past Sivota, and now pretty high up again. Just uh, on the side of the road a minute. Not a car for miles. No cyclists. Is that a good or a bad thing? I don't know. Sometimes it's nice. Actually, I just saw two, uh, a guy and a girl on touring bikes. Loads of panniers and luggage, good on them. So dig a big old tour. And look at this downhill. And then we go back to Parga, nice little seaside village loads of restaurants tavernas bars and a uh, nice little venetian castle up there on the hill and another weird one over there by the church which i actually swam to yesterday walked up but uh yeah what a place to start and finish a ride i'm gonna get down there for a coke see you in the next one coming out to Greece, coming on a family holiday to the Ionians, doing some sailing, doing some water sports, get out on the bike as well because it's one of the best places to ride in Europe. There we go. Cheers. See you in the next one.